Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. This is the first of several videos going over the Unit 7 review. This one is specifically going to cover parallelograms, so lessons uh, 7, 2, and 7, 3. Uh, and if you don't remember, um, there are seven properties of parallelograms uh, that we're going to discuss, or that were discussed in class. And so I'm going to refer to this portion of the um, quadrilateral flowchart that we have in class, and that's on Google Classroom. So if you have any questions, you can always refer to this as well. So parallelograms have seven properties. Uh, they're quadrilaterals first and foremost, which means they have four sides. But beyond that, opposite sides are parallel on parallelograms. Opposite sides are congruent on parallelograms. Opposite angles are congruent on parallelograms. Um, the diagonals bisect each other, uh, so they cut each other in half. Uh, also, consecutive angles add up to 180 degrees. So the angles right next to each other in a parallelogram must add up to 180 degrees. We have one pair of sides is both congruent and parallel. And then lastly, it says the diagonals divide the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. These last two aren't used very often. It's mainly these top five that you really, really need to know. But you should still have an idea of what these two mean. And we talked about this in class. So moving on. So if you look at number one, it says which value of x makes these quadrilaterals a parallelogram? And we have angles, sides, and diagonals that we really need to focus on. So on this one, we're focusing on angles. So I'm going to specifically look at the angle properties here. One says opposite angles are congruent. The other one that uh, says consecutive angles add up to 180. And if you look here, these angles are opposite of each other. And since they're opposite, they must equal each other. So this angle here is 100 degrees. So that would be the answer for x. So again, the idea is since these sides are parallel to each other, opposite sides are parallel, it forces opposite angles to be congruent. Number two, though, is also focusing on angles, but it's not focusing on opposite angles. It's focusing on consecutive angles. Consecutive angles are angles that are next to each other, and it says that these must add up to 180 degrees. So since these angles are next to each other, they have to equal 180 degrees. Since I know one of them is 65 degrees, I take that away from 180, and I'm left with 115 degrees. So this angle measure is 115 degrees. And basically what it comes down to between these two problems, if the angles look the same, they are. If they don't look the same, they have to equal 180. Since this angle is obtuse and this is acute, they don't look the same. They're going to have to add up to 180. Since these are both obtuse here, those have to be congruent to each other. Number three says, or number three not says, we have a problem here where we have opposite sides are equal to each other, so five and five. And so if five, uh, these two sides are equal, these two sides would also be equal. So x would have to be 12 here. And again, that's the property that opposite sides are congruent to each other. So since these are equal, these must be equal to each other as well. Since x is 12, that would force this to be a parallelogram. Uh, number four, is this focusing on sides, angles, or diagonals? It's focusing on diagonals. So from this corner to this corner is called a diagonal. It's a line that cuts through a shape from corner to corner. This is also a diagonal because it's going through the shape from corner to corner. So this diagonal cuts this diagonal in half. So notice how these are congruent to each other, 8 and 8. These would also be congruent to each other. So that would be x, x is 11. And again, so since this is focusing on diagonals, we could look at the quadrilateral flow chart. And diagonals is on two of these. But this one is specifically focusing on diagonals bisect each other. So that would be the answer to number four. Now let's move on to a little bit more challenging problems, but over the same concepts. So if we look at 5 through 8, notice the algebra gets a little bit more challenging. And also, it says, which value of x makes these quadrilaterals a parallelogram? And then find the length of the segment or angle for each problem. So if you look at number 5, we're not solving just for x. We're also trying to find the length of j, k. So is this focusing on sides, angles, or diagonals? It's focusing on sides. So what do we know about sides? There's two things that we need to know about sides. One is that opposite sides are parallel. That's not going to help us here. But opposite sides are congruent. That will help us. So since I know opposite sides are congruent, I can assume that 3x would equal 57. And if we divide by 3 here in your calculator, that would get you 19. So x is 19. And since I know they're equal to each other, if ml is 57, so should jk. It should also be equal 57. And you can always plug 19 back into x here. 3 times 19 does get you 57. So it's just a couple ways to check that you got that right. Number six, 
Is this focusing on sides, angles, or diagonals? It's focusing on diagonals, right? So there's no numbers on the sides or angles. It's focusing on these two segments right here. And what do we know about diagonals on a parallelogram? Well, mainly the one we need to focus on is the fourth one here. It says diagonals bisect each other. So very similar to number four above, diagonals bisect each other, meaning they're equal to, they cut each other into two equal parts, except for this one's a little bit more challenging because of the algebra. So I know that this diagonal here is cutting this one in half, and this diagonal is cutting this one in, into two halves. So I can assume that 6x plus 3 would equal 15. So if I were to take away 3 from both sides, 6x equals 12, divide by 6, so x is going to be 2. So x is 2. And if I want to find DE, DE is going to be the same as EB, because again, diagonals bisect each other. So you can assume it's going to be 15, or you can plug 2 back into DE, 6 times 2 plus 3. Well, that's 12 plus 3, and that also equals 15. Two more to go. Number 7, let's move on. So is this focusing on sides, angles, or diagonals? It is focusing on angles. And what do we know about angles? We know two things about angles. We know that opposite angles are congruent. We also know that consecutive angles must equal 180 degrees. And these are consecutive. They're right next to each other. So since they're next to each other, they must equal 180 degrees. So that's the math here. It is 7x minus 1 plus 118 is going to equal 180 degrees because that's just how this works. So combine like terms, 7x, what is 118 minus 1? Well, that's plus 117 equals 180. Take away 117 from both sides, so I'm solving for x here. 7x equals 63. And if you divide by 7, we get x is equal to 9. So x is 9 here. And it wants us to verify this. So basically, it wants us to find r. So we're going to verify that these two add up to 180 here in a moment. So if I do 7 times 9 minus 1, 7 times 9 is 63, minus 1 is 62, so angle R is 62 degrees. And if you plug a 62 in here and you add it to 118, you do get back to 180. That's kind of a way to check your answer as well. So if you plug it back in, these have to equal 180. Last one we have is number 8. Number 8 is focusing on sides, right? And what do we know about opposite sides on parallelograms? We know they must equal each other. So this is a variation of 3 and 5, except for the math is a little bit more challenging. Since these sides are equal, I can set them equal to each other. So 4x plus 7 equals 7x minus 5. So I'm going to get x on one side, subtract 4x from both sides. We get 7 equals 3x minus 5. Now I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get that 3x by itself. So I have 12 equals 3x. If I divide by 3 here, I end up with x is 4. And if x is 4, we can now plug it back in to find the other segment at once, which is hg. So hg is 4x plus 7. It's also going to be 4 times 4 plus 7. Since we know what x is, I can plug it back into the x. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 plus 7 23. So that would be the answer to that one. So hopefully this helps you understand these concepts. Um, if not, I've got videos on uh, Google Classroom going over specifically lessons 7, 2, and 7, 3. Uh, beyond that, I've got tutoring as I normally do. So hopefully this helps you. Have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.